behind me here, we have the Highway Glacier, and behind that, the Penny Ice Cap, as we've already had a look at. Either side of the glacier, though, we have these beautiful mountains, which have been carved out and plucked by the glacier as it's travelled down. These rocks are from a time period known as the Precambrian. This time period stretches from 4.56 billion years ago, when the Earth was formed, to just 550 million years ago. That's a time span of about 4 billion years, which is huge when you consider that humans, as we know them, have only been around on the Earth for about 40,000 years. These rocks here on Baffin Island are part of an area of rocks called the Canadian Shield. This shield is all Precambrian rock and is known as a craton. So cratons are these areas of rocks which are making up the interior of continents, in this case North America. The Canadian Shield stretches as far south as the northern US and it encircles Hudson Bay. However, on this area of Baffin Island, so the northeastern shore, we have some of the tallest mountains in the Canadian Shield. It's not clearly known why, but it's believed that it could be either due to uplift of this region, which means that they were lifted up and then eroded down rather than just eroded down like in other areas, or it could have been due to a collision from continental drift, perhaps with Greenland. The rock that makes up most of these mountains in Canadian Shield is a rock called granite, which looks quite similar to this one here. As you can see, the minerals that are making up this rock aren't clearly distinguishable. Yet, a lot of these mountains in this area have undergone a process called metamorphism. This is a process which means the rock has experienced heat or pressure, or perhaps both, which has changed either the structure of the minerals in the rock or, may in, or even sometimes the composition. We can see here, in this rock, how these minerals have split into bands. So we've got some black bands here. So those minerals have changed their structure of the rock. Now granite has some minerals which are compulsory. They have to be present to make the rock a granite. We can actually have a look at a few of them just over here. So, I'll put my granite down, try and keep this weighted down from uh, the bit of the breeze that we've got today. So here, this is our first mineral that we're going to look at. It's called quartz, and as you can see it's got a bit of a shiny surface which is often favoured by um, people carving minerals and it's often a very popular mineral to pick up in shops as a pretty little rock to take home. It forms prisms when it grows which means that wherever you cut it on the cross section you get the same shape. This example of quartz however has been quite fractured so it's not completely clear that prismatic shape. So next we've got a bit of a smaller sample here. This is a mineral called plagioclase feldspar. Bit of a complicated term but um, essentially it's one of those three minerals that has to make up the granite as well as this nicely coloured one here which is an alkali feldspar. So they have the same structure but it's just their composition that's slightly different there. Now, if we have a look at this bit of granite again, let's see if we can spot some of these minerals that we've just been learning about. You can see these uh, pink bits quite clearly. Those are our alkali feldspars. And these white bits that we can see are our plagioclase. Our quartz will be the slightly clearer looking ones, which might be quite hard to pick up without the sunlight on it. Now, you may have noticed We've got some other minerals in here, like these black ones. Whilst there are those three minerals that have to be present to make a granite, there are many other minerals that might want to come into the same rock, and they're called accessory minerals. This black mineral is very present 
in high concentration in this rock. So if I just tilt that in the light, you can see it shining there. Now this is a mineral called mica. And it's when it grows, it grows in very small, thin sheets. And if you find this mineral on its own, it's you can peel off sheets of it, like pages of a book. And so these black bits are what's making up the black bits of the rock. So, these are our three main minerals, and then you can add in quite a lot of others to make this granite.